Okay, so let's let's talk about oil and, and treating your bowl. Um, first of all, you you could you know leave the bowl uh, untreated. Just you know, don't put anything on it, uh, and you know it'll hold up fine. It might not stay looking quite as pristine and so on, but you know it, it's fine to use that way or just display or just you know store things in. But uh, the advantage of, of oil, uh, for appearance of course, it's going to, uh, like any finish, deepen the color and, uh, you know, enhance it. For example, you know, this is a walnut bowl that has not been oiled yet. And of course you can see how the oil is going to deepen and darken the color. Uh, this is another walnut bowl here and you can see it'll have the same, same effect. Um, you know, here's a, a cherry bowl that you know, has no oil on it, and you know this is a cherry bowl that's been oiled. The other thing is, of course, cherry is going to darken over time, and so that patina will just build up and darken whether or not you put the oil on it. Um, the in use, the oil is going to uh, protect the wood from uh, you know juices and fluids and liquids and stuff from soaking into the wood. And so what we want is an oil that's safe for us to eat from and I like to also use a product that's safe for me when I'm applying it and uh, that will protect the bowl. Now I've, a lot of people and I did you know a uh, number of years ago use some mineral oil and mineral oil has the advantage of you know uh, not ha causing any problems. It's you know you can you can um, drink it as a, a laxative and so on. So it's not going to hurt you, um, but it also never hardens and it eventually will evaporate. And so you just you reapply and reapply and reapply the mineral oil. And in in my experience, the mineral oil uh, definitely does not protect as well as things like flaxseed oil or walnut oil. Uh, which are drying oils. And so, we, you know, keeping things as simple as possible because we can get into all sorts of various chemical processes. Um, a drying oil will soak into the wood and then harden and cure in the wood. And so it provides much more lasting protection. We have spoons and bowls that you know that we've been using for years and years and uh, if I freshen them up with a little bit of oil um, they look almost as as good as you know when I made them but maybe better because the you know in use these things will develop some patina now some some of the pieces I make are obviously more for use and others are you know a little fancier pieces uh, but in you know you can use them all this is about as simple as it gets. This is the cereal bowl that I, you know, carved uh, uh, you know, beginning of last year or something that I've been using now. It's been used hundreds of times, washed hundreds of times in the sink with, you know, regular dishwasher detergent and so on. And, you know, if you uh, looked closely, you can see just from the oatmeal and cereal and stuff over those hundreds of uses, the inside of the bowl is gently scoured. Um, the ridges between the, the cuts, the facets, have been worn down a little bit. Um, but you know, this has had you know blueberries and all sorts of things that you might think would stain the wood, but the oil protects it. Uh, it you know, I wash it, I dry it, and put it back in the cupboard, and it works fine. You know, it's the same thing with heat. You know, this, this is an example of a spoon that's been around for years and um, it gets stirred around pots, hot food, um, and it just holds up fine. It's never been retreated. In theory, it's nice if you, you know, retreat them every month or two, but who remembers that? Uh, and so you just, you just keep using them and they, they hold up really well. Uh, this is a spoon that's uh, not been used yet and you can see it's you know a little brighter and um, you know a little more shine to it but um, 
if I retreated this with a little oil, uh, it would you know, be pretty close to that as well. And so it just gets better with use. This is an example of another bowl similar to the, to the style we've been making in this video. Um, you know, very subtle facets on the inside. This has been used and washed many times over a few years. Um, nice and light. Uh, and I, you know, kept the sapwood on the cherry up here. And, you know, it holds up very well. Um, and it's just the oil uh, protects it. So the oil that I use, you get lots of, of choices in terms of drying oils. There are a few. You've got walnut oil, hemp seed oil. Um, and the one that I use is flaxseed oil. And there's many different brands, but the simplest way to get it, if you just want a little bit of quantity, if you go to any health food store or go to a good grocery store, you'll see it listed as flaxseed oil. Now, flaxseed oil is linseed oil. It comes from the uh, uh, flax plant that can be grown for flax seed oil or linseed or it can also be grown uh, was grown much more often in the past for the flax fiber which is where we get linen so you have the linseed coming from the flax plant and if it's food grade if it's cold pressed from the seeds food grade then you have what it gets the name flaxseed oil um, your more hardware store grades are going to use the term linseed oil. And so you have what, you know, an example here, this is um, cold pressed food grade flaxseed oil. And you're going to get much better deals buying it in large quantities like this gallon uh, than if you buy an eight ounce bottle at a health food store. That, you know, a gallon will probably cost twice as much or three times as much as eight ounces in a um, health food store. But it's the same product, essentially. Um, and this, this also is, you know, I just store it. I've tried different brands and stuff. I really haven't noticed much of a difference. Um, uh, and I'll explain, you know, how you know, I, I apply it and use it in a second. Another option is um, raw linseed oil. This is polymerized linseed oil, technically not sold in health food stores, so it's, it's linseed oil, but this is 100% safe. Um, there's no additives, no heavy metal dryers, um, and so the polymerization means it's been heat treated. So it will, it's going to be thicker bodied and um, cure a little bit faster. Uh, and there's a number of other varieties and brands with, you know, pre-oxidized and, and um, polymerized and, and all these sorts of things. But I have found that they, they all work effectively. There's not a major advantage of one over the other, in my experience. This one's also mixed with a little bit of beeswax, and, and I'll talk about that in my process in a minute. Um, you could use um, raw linseed oil from the hardware store. There's a raw linseed oil that you can just get at the hardware store. Um, I've done a little research into that. The way that's obtained, the only the, the difference would be in a cold pressing, they're going to mechanically press the seeds. And so you get cold pressed oil. And in the raw linseed oil at the hardware store, if it's raw, it still hasn't had any heavy metal drying agents added but they've extracted more oil from the seed mash by adding a solvent, such as hexane or something, and then they will, uh, that pulls more oil out of the seeds, and then they'll get rid of the solvent through some evaporation or distillation process, leaving, in theory, pure raw linseed oil. And so it's, it's pr pr fine to use, although technically not food grade, um, but it is a much darker product, um, and it will darken the wood a lot more, and it's a little, little more yellow um, than most of the, you know, linseed oil products um, that, you know, sort of the higher end. And then the thing you don't want to use at the hardware store is what they call boiled linseed oil. Uh, it's not truly boiled linseed oil. It's just got heavy metal drying agents added that are, you know, 
bad for your health and bad for when you're applying it and so on. And so uh, you don't want to use the, the fake boiled linseed oil. Um, so how I apply it, if I were to take this bowl and apply the oil, I would, it's not ready for oil yet, of course, but I would uh, just pour some oil in the middle and slather it all over the place with my hands. Uh, definitely no need for rubber gloves. It's good for your hands as well. Uh, and so you just rub the oil all over the thing and let it soak in a little bit. And my, I think that the thing that I've found that helps it to cure faster because in, in that state, uh, you can use it immediately if you want. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. Um, but it's just going to be a little bit oily every time you pick it up and it might stain your tablecloth and that kind of thing until it's cured. And it can take weeks to really set up and cure. And so uh, the, I have found that heat and sunlight uh, really help it to cure a lot faster. If it's a nice bright sum, summer day, I'll just set it out uh, on the patio and just let the sun soak into it. And, You'd be surprised, the surface with the oil on that bowl will get almost to the point where it's, it's very uncomfortable to touch. It's extremely hot. And it will cure much faster after a day or so you know, in the sun like that. You know, within a, a matter of a couple days even, it can stop giving off any oil and, and residue. Um, and you can try, you know, another coat will deepen it a little bit. And I usually follow up with a final coat of uh, linseed oil mixed with beeswax. And you can mix up your own as well. You just take a little bit of the oil, take some beeswax, heat them together in a double boiler arrangement, or you can even melt them in the microwave. And uh, just be, you know, don't get it hotter than necessary. You don't want the oil to you know, catch on fire but I've never had any experience with that happening. So when you melt those together at the same temperature, when they cool, it's gonna form uh, a bit of a paste that can then be you know, rubbed on and uh, more beeswax is gonna be a thicker, thicker paste uh, and less is going to be thinner. Um, so, and again, the heat now if, if it's if it's in the winter and you don't have any strong sun uh, or if it's just an overcast day you can uh, use a you know wood stove uh, I could set it by the wood stove in the winter uh, or you can have a little light bulb kiln I built a few years ago for drying chair rungs that works great for drying these pieces too well I hope this video has been helpful to you I hope it's inspired you to pick up an axe and adds uh, the woods all around you. you start looking at uh, trees and branches and finding inspiration in them and you know, don't overthink it by following just a few simple procedures and using a little creativity you can make uh, pieces that you're very proud of and that you can actually use uh, you know there, there's just something about making a piece like even just a small cereal bowl or a serving bowl uh, that uh, makes those you know, times with family even more special or if it's just you in the morning quietly, quietly eating a bowl of cereal. Um, every day you can live with the things you've made and it's a lot of fun. Have fun.